Good morning, everyone. And thank you for joining us this morning. A special good morning to Chairman and CEO of Music TT, all other specially invited guests, stakeholders, and students of the CCI. Good morning to you all. For maybe before I begin to offer a commendation to Chair and CEO and the team on this outstanding initiative, our Reverb, RVRB, I believe they pronounce it Reverb, which has brought us together for the last three days to discuss matters pertinent to our futures in the arts and culture. I am quite grateful for this opportunity to share my perspective on a subject that has often drawn me into interrogating its relevance to our development. And so this is where I want to begin my discussion. I am quite aware that the idea of the festival beyond its aesthetic value has increasingly come to the forefront and continues to hold our attention, not just here in Trinidad and Tobago, but across the region. And I see these values taking the form of contributing features, as I'm showing here, that collectively have spawned a festival experience of varying forms and contexts that has come into significant demand. It is these on it is these contributing features that highlight the festival relevance that have led me to reason that the festival experience essentially comprises two key elements, which I consider to be the culture of experience and an experience of culture. And I'll come back to that a bit when we get further on into the discussion. Now, whether you agree with my idea of the festival experience, what we do know is that the festival has always been an interlocking element within the broader landscape of the arts and culture. And within the last three decades, as you see on this slide here, um, it has become very pivotal to the entire cultural and creative industries ecosystem, notwithstanding of the COVID pandemic. As my colleague and co-author, Dr. Deborah Hick Gordon at ICS UWI Mona has mapped out here for us, she has indicated that there are over 18 CCI sectors with 40 plus subsectors. Just yesterday, she was telling me more come in, more come in. You know. And if you look at her mapping, I'm sure you could see the festival and the festival experience located across each of those sectors and subsectors in some form or fashion. It is therefore not, or it ought not to be surprising though there, of course, remain some misbelievers amongst us, that the festival over time has generated some notable effects on the wider socioeconomic landscape, as I have indicated here. And if you notice, development impacts not only deal with economics, but certainly if one is to consider transformative development, it must take in consideration the sociocultural features as well as you see transform of social cultural landscape there on one, one of the edges of the star. Those impacts at this time, as we all know and appreciate, are considered in jeopardy at, because we have been forced indoors, separated from each other, a major contradiction to the arts and showcase of the Caribbean festival experience. Although this lamentation has been raised primarily for the carnival here in Trinidad and Tobago, it is to be acknowledged that other traditional but non-secular festivals such as Ramlila, Diwali, Huste, Orisha festivals have all contributed variously to these impacts of blind here. In a similar way, through the, through the context of creation, production, and showcasing, mainly through gathering. So how has the rest of the world been coping? It would seem that festival operators across the globe transitioned over the past two years. It's almost two years, you know, I'm counting. From online showcasing that encompasses performances as well as talk shops, as you see in the corner, the Ake Festival, which was a mixture of performance and talks by persons from across the African diaspora, to returning face-to-face, Yes, we've been seeing a lot of that across the US. I highlighted three that got a lot of attention in the media um, in the past year, in the summer period, sorry. Uh, Milwaukee, interestingly, experienced a dip 
and many of the vendors were not satisfied and they felt it was because of the strict um, protocol rules. Whereas on the other hand, La La Palosa and Rolling Love Miami, which is a big hip hop, um, pop music um, festival, had about 75,000, there's an error there, 75,000 over three nights. And of course, that was a concern because many were not vaccinated and many were not masked. But with all these experiences, other festival operators looking at what has happened online and in person, what we are seeing emerging is the hybrid. And the hybrid, it felt, is the way in which we will find our festival experience evolving. I like to take it as having a, a, a bit of both worlds in a sense. And so it is likely that we are going to see more of what has been attempted by the Brooklyn Book Festival, which is one of the smaller of the three there, and a Leeds Festival and the National Arts Festival of South Africa, which is a major global festival, um, has been subject to a lot of research in this area as a matter of fact. So I'm quite looking forward to seeing what colleagues will say about that festival, having transitioned now to that new dispensation of, of online. Well, of course, in the Caribbean, we are not to be left out. Um, initial responses to the pandemic did see us going into the digital environment. Last year, I did a quick study when we were first impacted by the COVID to ask festival operators across the Caribbean um, how it was impacting them. And the survey does zero in on Trinidad and Tobago, but this data here is specific to festival operators across the region. When I asked how they were using the digital environment, and whilst about 35% said they were not using it, um, you will notice that others did indicate that their focus predominantly was on streaming live content, recording and uploading content. And if we recall for the past year, we certainly did experience many examples of that in varying forms. Um, these are some of the notable ones. Um, in the corner at the, um, at the top there, one will notice that the artist was also supported by corporate sponsorship. As you see at the bottom, and I don't know if you see clear enough, there's our Caribbean Airlines hanging in there with Jamaica, which is a carnival band out of Jamaica. And it would seem to me, though, that when I looked at these um, forms of the festival experience being put up there, it was largely premised on the traditional model of showcase and consumption with the use of the digital platform as a stage. Indeed, the initiatives are to be considered significant as part of charting our futures where the festival experience is concerned, if only because they have shown us what we can do beyond the old normal, if we dare to. However, because there remains a lag in other important areas of infrastructure, research development, innovation strategy and policy, digital strategies, including strategies and mechanisms for monetization in the online environment, we have really found ourselves at a place where our festival experience has gone offshore and not necessarily export to places where the traditional mode of the festival experience is based, based on gathering can occur. And I think at this point in time, this is perhaps one of our most notable examples. I believe that the artist is still on tour at this point in time. And we know that Miami Carnival is coming up soon and um, he is not the only artist is out there, but he, as far as I am aware, he was the one who would have developed a tour. And this is why I use this. If you notice, he even has the term there, premium experience. So there's the sensibility of the experience that we seek to inculcate here um, with that aspect of the carnival being transported over there. And I'm saying offshore because we can't do anything here at this point in time as we try to, to grapple with the pandemic. And so the, the term for me at this point in time seems most appropriately to be offshore. We can certainly discuss that more if time um, permits. But I like to say that the pandemic is a wake up call because if we are to be honest, you know, we already had a few of these issues to work on with regard to engendering a sustainable development model through the festival, even before COVID. And these have always been my pet peeves of, as I've listed there. 
And so as a result of these challenges, if I take a tap back, the festival experience as traditionally operationalized here and across the region finds itself possibly might be out of step with the realities of the global festival economy because of the fact that we continue to have these challenges, which would of course inhibit our natural progression towards online in a full-fledged and, and, and in a way that will reap those financial economic benefits, as well, of course, um, in terms of being able to go hybrid as well. So then how do we ensure a sustainable future in such a context? And I want to propose that we return to the drawing board starting with the basics in order to discern and define how we reshape the federal experience. And this must be tied to some form of active ongoing operationalization that realizes real opportunities and generates change while at the same time securing desired outcomes. I like to use the term praxis to refer to such as I've recently written in a forthcoming piece to be published at UWI Press entitled how to tell a soca music story, trying to develop a critical framework for Caribbean popular culture preservation using the repertoire of Marshall Montano as a guide and framework for strategic action. And I would have made the point in that piece that access allows for flexible formulation such that indigenous thought and action can be infused towards the outcomes being sought. And so it is possible to arrive at different practices for various contexts. And if you've seen my 2017 paper on festivals, looking at Cari Festa, um, you would see I advanced the notion there for, of a Caribbean festival praxis. More recently, having developed this one, culture-driven praxis, um, you could have community development practice, you could have innovation practice, and so on. The point is that whichever one is being cultivated, it is being uniquely formulated with consideration for the nuances within the context to which it is being applied. So for reshaping the festival experience, I want to suggest that the notion of the festival experience, as I posited before, that being a culture of experience and an experience of culture is tied to to practical mechanisms, which I have acronymed as PARTY. Easy for us to remember in the context of festivals in Trinidad and Tobago, even when it is a spiritual um, festival, it's a celebration. And so PARTY is offered here as a framework for action that can guide how we seek to further build on our festival experience, attain the outcomes that we are seeking. So if we party, it means that we will be seeking to pivot. That is to imagine new dynamic ways of sustainable festival capital. And this is where all of the new technical trends, technological infrastructure that is now within reach because of digitization needs to be explored and located. And I will speak a little bit more about that as I close in the examples resilience and sorry actualize which is a sound practice and we've already talked about what that could look like in terms of how we define festival experience and what that can mean for us resilience and resilience for me is not an abstract noun it's a verb according to wood which allows us to identify create where necessary utilize the existing resources and capabilities that we have to push through Test, which has always been my favorite, which is measure, something that we often drop the ball on. Um, sometimes we do measure and sometimes we don't see it as a priority. And we know that in the region to date, we are still lapsed in terms of having frameworks such as satellite accounting systems that would allow us to properly measure our festival ecosystem. And lastly, yield, strategically create platforms of learning and engagement to give support ongoing expansion and formalization and certainly at the department of creative and festival arts uwi we do try to do our part same we have at mona at the ics we have at cave with our new faculty but i think if we are to be honest to ourselves we do need to dig deeper in terms of how we what we establish as those platforms and how we roll those out 
so that if I were to give some practical examples based on what I said there, pivoting for me is developing and harnessing the requisite digital infrastructure needed to operate opportunities for monetization, for example. Um, this is something that is still a gray area. Um, I know some work academically has been done in terms of music by my colleague Farley Joseph, and I believe that more of this work has to be done, not only in terms of what may be monetization opportunities for the music industry, but of course across the other sectors of the CIs, and of course including the festival experience. We must start to examine new modes of merchandising and forms, tangible and intangible. Um, there are people in the diaspora, I'm sure, would certainly whip out the, the credit card to have an online moment with one of our master um, artists within the festival arena, whether it's visual arts, mass arts, pan, or in terms of the masquerade itself or music. Adoption of tech systems for engendering a safer and more reliable experience. So for example, use of facial recognition, um, cashless systems, VR augmented reality, touchable tech. These are all things that are within our reach and to my understanding are already here. We need to start deeper and see how we can use these things within our own festival um, context to enhance that festival experience and at this time to make it a safer place. Um, pivot also needs to be that we develop the appropriate protocols. Um, I know there's some work being done through the CDB uh, for Barbados in terms of establishing a handbook that could be a standardized way, a means of following that we could, of course, um, begin to contemplate that hybrid approach. Actualize. This is the song praxis. So this is a festival experience based on what we consider to be an authentic indigenous culture of experience, identifying the elements that make up this, determining which can work in person, and of course, those that are even more dynamic online. And this will in turn generate a range of emotion within, the, within festival attendees and ultimately encourage them to identify with and even own the festival experience, the festival event, as one might imagine, the cultivation of such an experience of culture would in turn augur well for interventions to pivot, such as in terms of things such as merchandising. Resilience, as a verb, it requires correct matching and utilization of existing resources and capabilities. And where there are gaps, building up on those capacities to push through this, and in this regard, mapping exercises and of places, venues, communities, useful to determine what exists, generate hybrid opportunities. Resource, resource audits are equally important to identify and match the requisite resources in terms of finance, HR, systems, intellectual property to realize the outcomes there where that is concerned. And where financial resources seem non-existent, planning and strategizing on collaborative opportunities, exploring new sources of revenue streams is, is being encouraged. Test, perhaps my favorite, for those of you who know my work, consistently measuring impacts at all levels, not just at the governmental level, community level, at the level of the festival entrepreneur. There is the indicate the effect of COVID-19 on the festival to some extent, how much have we amassed? There are persons out there who have done their, their small little studies in various ways, such as I, how I did one last year. Do we know what remains of the sector? Do we know whether people have transitioned into other areas? Um, are there any success stories for those who have remained in the sector? Um, do we know how they have sought to pivot, for example? Do we know what they're thinking about as futures? So we need to audit our festival programming, not just in terms of what we have as a broad spectrum of festivals, but even microing into the festivals themselves to work with festival operators to look at what we've done before and look, about, look at what could possibly be changed now in this new context. And of course, that extends to auditing the festival experience as well. And lastly, of course, measuring impacts. Yield, in order to harvest, we have to build and implement appropriate training programs, internships, mentorship programs, incubator 
models. And harvesting is very important because the festival economy and by extension the festival experience is very much hinged on people. And without people, of course, we know there is not much left where the festival is concerned in terms of how that culture of experience and experience of culture um, maintains and holds through time that encourages people, of course, to return to that festival time after time. It is, in, it is through harvesting, as I have indicated here, the yield factor is what would assure sustainability down the road and continuity. And so I want to close by leaving you with this comment from Alexander Lee. The landscape of life has forever changed by the COVID-19 pandemic. With users primed and ready to experience events in the metaverse, festivals are entering virtual space and virtual spaces are developing a presence at in-person festivals. In the near future, it might not matter whether attendees experience events physically or virtually, the experience will simply be equivalent and persistent across both. And if you want to learn more about these things, I must put my plug. You can certainly check Dr. Tull out at ACAM. And of course, I close here. Thank you very much for listening. Happy to answer any questions if time permits. Thank you.